Good morning. This is Catherine from Gage Dye Works, uh, and Andrea Rangel is just going to join me here. I'm going to look distracted while I add Andrea to the live. And we are going to chat hats from our previous yarn clubs. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. I think my coach is perfect, not the phone. That's anyway, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this morning we're chatting hat design and specifically working back and forth to get the colors where you want them on the hat so that there's no cutting and joining in ends. Um, and actually, do you want to hold those up one more time? So both of these were made one skein of yarn, and the they both have just a tiny bit of stranded color work, so you do have to cut and join an end for that. But other than that, um, they're knit from one end to the other without needing to fiddle with changing yarn. Yep. Um, do you want to start with uh, chatting about the full spectrum hat? Yeah, let's do that. So with full spectrum, we had a goal to have a rainbow stripe side and a color work side. And this is one of those hats that is made as a long tube. So in order to get the stripes in the right spot, we cast on the hat at this end. And then there's math in order to get figure out how many stitches are basically between the cast on and the first rainbow stripe. And that was because we wanted the rainbow to fall approximately, you know, around, not the crown, not the top of the head, but just like this nice kind of skater vibe. <laughs> and you can turn up the brim as well if you want a few fewer stripes. But um, so that was really well planned to figure out if you cast on here, how are you going to get the rainbows to appear right there? And then the next section was like, okay, but we also want the hat to be adjustable so that if you wanted like a slouchier look or you wanted a more beanie type look, you can get that just by adjusting the length of your total hat. And in order to adjust the length, you can choose where you put your color work. So, the color work you do have to join yarn from the other end of the ball. So you had this yarn was split into two balls, one that was like the stripes and the gray and one that was a little ball for color work. And so that's, <clears throat> that's how we um, figured out how to make this hat so that you could adjust it to fit yourself, um, but that it would still work to have the stripes without, you don't have to um, do anything to get the stripes where you want them. Mm -hmm. So. And I, I feel like we need to just mention because um, people will look that look at that and see a muscle bro hat. And I feel like we should just mention you published this design the year before or two years before the muscle bro hat came out. This the hat construction is like a really classic traditional design that I know muscle bro has made it super famous. And it's that is such a cool pattern and I love Isolde. Um, but that style of pattern where you like start at one end and knit a bunch and then um, decrease for the other end, it's a really like classic kind of hat pattern. So yeah, it's muscle burrow style, but this is, this is our take on yes. it. So yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, neither <laughs> of you are claiming it. to, yeah, yeah, neither of you are claiming to invent it. Um, exactly. But yeah. Uh, Thanks, yeah. So that is um, how we got the stripes where we wanted them. And this was definitely a going back and forth between the two of us to figure out how much room we needed before we started the rainbows. So that's that one. Mm -hmm. And then, so this one is top down. Well, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, because you start at the crown, but then it, it's like both. Right, ends. I guess it's both. <laughs> but yeah. This one but, yeah. you cast on at a crown, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So we were planning in color this way yeah um and then you, you have another hat that started at the brim this was from last year's uh club so these this pattern is called the moon jelly hat and it's not available for general public yet it will be later in the year 
um, this one is. So you could buy this pattern if you wanted to. Um, but this one is was worked from the bottom up to the top. So you cast on for the brim. And what's cool about this one is that the same yarn that's used, the same color that's used here at the brim is the color that's used at for the color work. So the way that we, do you want to talk about how we planned that, I, how that yarn works? I actually just want you to show off why it's called the moon jelly hat, because our whole club was inspired by the ocean okay. that year. Let's see if I can get it. Is that in the frame? Uh, uh, you just went below, okay, right. but it, it kind of showed on the way past. See? Is that in the frame? Yeah, perfect, yeah. <laughs> And then I'll just take it off and we can show it like that. So. Yeah. So if you've ever seen moon jellies, they do have those four very distinctive kind of rings on top. Um, and then, you know, blob like body. And then uh, I, don't, I don't think tentacles is the right word. What's the word? Anyway, the ribbing mm -hmm. is the, this part of the jellyfish. Yeah. <laughs> the arms or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's that. It's sort of like this is the watery body and environment of the moon jelly, and then the color work is like a very literal interpretation of what the part of a moon jelly looks like. Um, and so the way that we designed this was that the cast on yarn is the same at, at either end, but I'm remembering that correctly, right? So it's like yeah. a symmetrical yeah. one. The skein Perfect. right here, and it is, it's symmetrical. Yeah. So the beginning and the end of the skeins have this pale kind of watery blue color. And so that when you get to the color work bit, the color has shifted and faded so that it's darker at the crown. So that when you take the yarn, you don't even have to split the skein. You can just take the yarn from the other end and it will be contrasting enough because the yarn has faded so or has changed color um, up to the crown. So that is um, a sort of clever way of getting around having to join yarn any more than absolutely necessary. And it's allowed us to create a skein that was like all the colors in one um, in one skein. And it also makes the yarn kind of versatile. Because if you decided that you didn't necessarily want to make this hat, then you could just make a pair of socks that looks right. really similar or that has like um, the two socks are identical because you could start from either end and make identical socks if you wanted to use your yarn um, more uh, in a more um, flexible way, like if you wanted a, a, to use it in, for something different. And that's actually um, something about the work that we do together is we do actually like both the pattern and the yarn to be flexible. So not only do we make patterns and yarns that are perfectly suited for each other that really go together, but if you really like the pattern and wanted to make it again with another yarn, I actually do have instructions for using a different yarn and you can substitute. Like it's not quite as easy to do as it is with the gauge yarns, right. but it's totally possible. And when we design the yarns, we also design them so that there's not like some super weird jarring color in the middle or something. You could just use the yarn for something else. So like the yarn is um, designed to be exactly for this project, but also usually a little bit flexible too. So Right, yeah. Um, and I just wanted to, just for planning the colors and the back and forth on that one, um, I think most of the back and forth was just figuring out, like we needed to get, we needed the yarn to get to the darkest color by the crown. Mm -hmm. But we also wanted, if you fold up the brim, yeah. to have That's nice contrast cool. and not have too much color change in the brim. Exactly. I loved how when you do fold up the brim on this one, you get this really 